This is Evan Lewis in Thames, New Zealand, and in this town there happens to be a great tourist attraction called the Gold Mine Experience. It's actually a real working gold mine, and it's driven by steam engines. And today we're going to be looking at pouring some white metal bearings for the steam engine for its main shaft, crankshaft. Uh, you can see the engine here stripped down, and the journals, or the uh, caps actually, for the journal bearings were missing. So it was necessary to make a pattern to replace them and have them cast in bronze and uh, today we're pouring white metal into the bearings. First, the surface was tinned with a special tin flux. That worked very well, and uh, it allowed the, the white metal to adhere very well. The Gold Mine Experience is all run by volunteers, and one of the volunteers is Nelson Valiant, who is going to show us today this technique of making bearings in his home workshop, which is an amazing place. So, of course, the first thing to do is to melt down some white metal uh, to make the bearings and while that's uh, melting he's warming up the cast bronze journal so that it doesn't uh, cause the white metal to, to set too quickly. He's put two pieces of wood on the ends as end plates because of the relatively low melting point of the white metal it's possible to use wood for the relatively short time it's exposed and in the center he has a piece of pipe um, to act as a core to the mold really. And he's warming it up here with oxyacetylene. These days we still use a similar kind of technology with plain bearings with a steel shell coated in a thin layer of white metal and often some complicated superficial plating layers, nickel and other things. Uh, but basically still a similar idea. And one of the things that happens with these plain bearings is that uh, if they come out with a high spot, uh, their friction will be enough to warm it up and cause the metal to spread into the low spot so it automatically adjusts itself to the shape of the shaft. As the metal starts to cool down it contracts and uh, we don't have any rises like you would have in a sand mold so there is uh, no pressure there really uh, so he has to top it up periodically to uh, compensate for the shrinkage. And here we see the white metal now being poured into the mold which is actually the bearing itself, just being poured into the bearing directly, and it adheres to that tinned surface very well. Some of you may remember um, having a new car with white metal bearings back uh, many decades ago, and they had to be run in, and the concept was you had to run the, the car relatively slowly without revving the engine up too much when it was brand new during this time when the white metal was running in from the high spots to the low spots, and that's why it was called running in. There are various uh, grades of white metal or different alloys. They generally contain lead up to about 5% tin, antimony, bismuth and zinc. The antimony um, forms relatively hard crystals which are floating in the, in the soft matrix um, and this uh, can adjust its shape and mold and absorb uh, bits of uh, metal that have come off the, the shaft. <laughs> And here's the maker here, the engineer. <laughs> Since the alloy can vary in its composition, the melting point can vary from about 185 to 225 degrees centigrade. The metal cools down quite quickly and in a few minutes we can knock it out of its mold and take an inspection of the surface of the bearing and it really looks good. In this case uh, there are oil channels or ducts that carry oil into the bearing. Uh, but of course the bearing doesn't have holes in it yet, so they will have to be drilled out anyway. But uh, some of the white metal got down inside the oil pipes and it was necessary to heat it up. And you can see he's um, actually heating it up and shaking the metal out of the, out of the oil channel. But you were just about successful. How about that? Mm. Of course, there's a lot of surplus metal to be trimmed off. That's usually the job of the fettler, to take off surplus metal. But Nelson decides to do this with his nice little end mill, which does a really nice job. I'll speed this video up because it's quite long. This is a German Mauser milling machine dated 1939. 
and it's got a label there that says the red handles mustn't be moved unless the machine is stationary and turned off. Slowly, lowly, it's probably it said these would have sprung a wee bit with a bit of heating. The last stage in the process today is to mount the whole bearing on the lathe to be bought out to the correct size. And uh, it's a difficult to make out, but there is a jig that he has made uh, that mounts on the front of the chuck as a disc. And on that, an ang basically an angle iron, which the bearing is mounted on, and all lined up so that he's ready to turn it. He lined it up with the original bearing, so it should be correct after pouring a new white metal bearing. 